Okay, so some of you might be wondering, well, I was taught that if I saw this, I could just split it up into two cases, that x plus 3 is less than negative 3, or x plus 3 is greater than 3. Flip, flip, happy, happy works. And normally that works. The only cases that it won't work are negative numbers and the zeros, like I talked about in the last video. But some of you might be wondering, well, why the heck is, doesn't that work? I mean, it makes sense when you look at it, but... The whole idea of two cases comes from the two cases of the absolute value. I told channel my dad when I think of this. Um, he would always write in his little felt tip marker, he would write case one, right? Case one, the absolute value, what's at inside of there, already represents a positive number. So for case one, x plus three is already positive, so x plus three is so the absolute value doesn't do anything, and x plus 3 is less than negative 3. So that's, this is case 1, and this is an x would be less than negative 6. But, let's see, if this idea for case 1 is true, if x plus 3 is greater than 0, that means that x is greater than negative 3. But x can't be greater than negative 3 and less than negative 6 at the same time. You cannot be greater than negative 3 and less than negative 6. So this guy here has no solution for case 1. So the second possibility for an absolute value, absolute value always means these two cases. It's like a definition of the absolute value. For case 2, what's ever inside the absolute value is negative, right? It can either be positive or it can be negative. Or it could be zero. We'll get to that. Okay. So, um, so case two, this is supposed to be negative, in which case the absolute value will take that negative and make it negative. Therefore, the negative negative will be the positive number that we expect to come out of the absolute value. And that would be less than negative three. So now, um, when we're solving this, we could say the, divide by a negative and get that case that x plus 3 is greater than 3. The sign flips because larger, the bigger the value of the larger the negative number is, the smaller the number is, that sort of thing. When you divide by a negative, um, you flip the sign. And so here is the case where x is greater than uh, 0. And so, okay, if x, then you go back up and you go, does this make any sense? x, in this case here, x is supposed to be less than negative 3. But you can't be less than negative 3 and greater than 0 at the same time. So this case has no solution. So notice that these are the cases that you would get up here if you solved it blindly, right? If you just split, split into the two cases that they tell you to, that they teach you to. If you split it up in blindly, those are the two solutions you get. But the original assumptions of those two cases, you, you didn't take into account, which is why they fail. This case is supposed to work when x, the inside was positive, and this case was supposed to work when the x was inside was negative. And it's just, there's no way that those things can happen. So, maybe that helps for the why. Um, but that is... But the only time, you don't really have to do this every time you do it. The only time um, this sort of idea blows up is when you have negative numbers or zeros on this side of the absolute value once it's solved for. So those are red flags. Otherwise, you're okay to split it up into two cases. Fine. But the idea that the absolute value of x is defined by, um, it's going to equal x if x is already positive, and it's going to equal a negative x if x is trying to be negative, um, and I can throw an equal sign on either one of those. It's okay because it's going to be zero in both. So, yeah, not the most rigorous, but hopefully it sheds some light. So there you go.